okay so our next topic is ecg and uh, we are going to discuss today normal and abnormal p wave before we discuss about the uh, anything else we briefly need to go through the genesis of the p wave so uh, uh, first of all we have the sa node from which fires uh, it depolarizes and uh, we have the um, the waves of depolarization moving downwards one towards the right atrium and the second one foot towards the left uh, left atrium so uh, we have uh, again uh, the the uh, important thing to keep in mind over here is that the sa node is present in the right atrium and uh, this would cause the right atrium to contract earlier in comparison to the left atrium okay keep this in back of your mind um, uh, we are going to uh, sort of discuss the, the principle related to uh, this thing uh, okay now uh, we have two leads uh, generally speaking when we are discussing about the p wave we usually see two leads one would be the limb lead second limb lead second and the other would another would be the chest limb lead v1 okay now the limb lead is usually in the front is in the frontal plane it measures the frontal plane and therefore uh, if we have uh, this one would be our heart <laughs> usually not a triangle but still um, and here we have lead to all the deflections going downwards uh, positive deflection going downwards in this direction would be counted as a positive deviation or as a positive deflection in the ecg say as a node is sparking uh, sorry it's firing and uh, wave moves downward we see a positive reflection in case of the limb lead uh, here in case of the chest lead we would be seeing uh, since it's a transverse lead now let's suppose we have heart over here left atrium would be posterior right atrium would be anterior the limb uh, chest lead is here so it measures the first of all when there is a positive reflection in case of the chest lead when the right atrium contracts first however in case of the um, when the left atrium contracts the sort of the um, the depolarization uh, vector is sort of opposite slightly opposite to the v win and therefore we see a biphasic type of uh, appearance in the um, the v1 lead okay so uh, this one is for the lead two and this one is for the chest lead chest lead okay so now let's discuss about the features of the normal p wave now p wave is a, a small upward deflection uh, as i've explained yeah you should of course the p wave is smaller in comparison to the qrs complex um uh, the uh, next thing uh, to keep in mind is that p wave can uh, uncommonly be nosed uh, this this again ties to the principle that uh, we have discussed already is that the sa node is present in the right atrium and due to the, if it's present in the right atrium the right atrium would contract early in comparison to the left atrium shortly after if the left atrium contracts this would cause a notchy appearance in case of the uh, p wave now the second thing to keep in mind is that the lead 1 2 avf and the chest leads v2 to v6 are generally upright in case uh, of the normal ecg uh, the uh, the third uh, point to see here is that uh, the p wave is inverted in case of the uh, avr now that's because uh, we can think of it easily because avr is present uh, uh, it's it's it it, it measure it's uh, slight nearer to the sa node and uh, now think uh, if all the deflections towards this uh, axis is are going to be positive and sa node is firing and all the uh, deflections or the depolarization are moving opposite in comparison to the avr now what will happen this would create a negative deflection in case of the avr and that's why the avr is inverted now uh, the v1 lead is usually upright okay however it may uh, sometimes be um, by physic uh, as i've explained earlier it's again because of that uh, sa node is present in the right atrium and difference between the timings of the right and the left atrium the second point would be that uh, it's uh, it, it can be inverted now uh, and the third point would be that uh, it's it can be flat also now th these both these points are usually rare but uh, they are seen so i have just included them usually uh, a low a low ill point over here but still uh, just um, for the sake of completeness right okay now we are ready to discuss about the abnormal p waves now uh, two types of abnormality uh, basically are there uh, the first one we are going to see is the right atrial abnormality 
the second would be the uh, left atrial abnormality okay so first uh, see the about let's see about the right atrial abnormality now uh, the, in case of the abnormality we can have the um, enlargement of the atria we can have the hypertrophy of the atria now uh, generally speaking the atrial abnormality are usually because of the lung diseases okay now uh, why because you know that we have the pulmonary circuit going through the heart and uh, uh, generally uh, if there is any problem or some uh, disease of the lung like pulmonary hypertension or anything else copd this would uh, create problems in the right atrium the diagnosis of the right atrial abnormality is uh, by looking at both p wave and the qrs complex moreover is that we cannot uh, actually measure the hypertrophy uh, of the atria with the uh, ecg tracing now uh, this is a uh, going to a long way it's a higher principle that uh, hypertrophy cannot be measured with the help of ecg of the atria specifically of the atria we can measure the hypertrophy of the ventricles uh, crudely with the ecg however we can never measure in case of the atria why so because the uh, the, the depolarization in case of the atria moves downward uh, and uh, instead of being flowing transverse so uh, instead of flowing transverse uh, it moves downwards and hence we cannot measure the hypertrophy because hypertrophy refers to the thickness uh, of the atrial wall and uh, since the depolarization generally moving downwards in case of the atria and not transversely and we have placed remember we have placed most of the chest leads uh, around the ventricles uh, they and therefore uh, the transverse aspect of the heart usually represents the ventricles uh, and uh, hence we are able to measure the thickness of the ventricle or uh, otherwise stated the hypertrophy of the ventricles okay so uh, that's that's the key point over here okay so the p wave abnormality in case of the uh, right atrial abnormality uh, would be that uh, the p wave is pointed now why they are pointed and have increased amplitude uh, it's easy to imagine that uh, the when the right atrial wall is usually dilated or it's enlarged uh, so uh, when the the uh, the amount of the depolarization or otherwise stated the dipole reaching from here to here is more in comparison to the normal let's say this was the our normal uh, atria and this one is the enlarged atria so this one is much more in length and uh, length or is directly proportional to the dipole moment so if the dipole moment is more therefore we will get a more positive deflection in case of the lead two and of course uh, even in the uh, chest lead okay the second point to keep in mind is that the deviation is usually uh, right there is a right axis deviation now uh, now what is happening over here is that uh, usually in case of the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases or in the emphysema patients uh, the 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 diaphragm becomes um, the 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 dome of the diaphragm is uh, not maintained much and uh, this this causes the heart to become slightly vertical and uh, this causes the mean vector or the mean axis of the heart to slightly move towards the right side and uh, this in turn causes the right axis deviation in case of the um, um, the right atrial abnormality and now uh, if the right atrial abnormality is uh, associated with the lung disease and the lung disease itself is causing the change in uh, position of the heart uh, slightly a slight change in the position of the heart this would cause the right axis deviation um, uh, this point uh, we are going to discuss further um, uh, shortly afterwards um, okay now left atrial abnormality left atrial abnormality uh, usually are associated with prolonged p wave and notching now the idea here is that uh, uh, that uh, whenever uh, in say in case of a lead 2 we are measuring the um, depolarization and now um, the there is a deflection like this uh, the the time of the of the p wave would be greater in comparison to the point 11 seconds now this uh, prolongation and the delay is because we have the um uh, enlarged um 
left atrium and this has uh, sort of a caused a uh, greater dipole moment and uh, uh, that the charge has to depolarize more and it has to travel more so it just increases the time and delays the completion of the p wave um, it, it, there, there is a notching again because of the same because there is a delay and uh, there is no completion of the uh, simultaneous completion of both the uh, uh, left atrium and the right atrium. Therefore, uh, as the right atrium is going to just depolarization is going to finish, the left atrium is still in a depolarizing phase, is still depolarizing because it's enlarged and the dipole has to move farther away. Now, uh, in, in V12, we have a uh, longer negative deviation. Now, this negative deviation is longer in case of the uh, lead V1 also because uh, sort of the enlargement, because of the enlargement of the atria, the, the wave is more, uh, in, the dipole moment has increased. And again, because of dipole moment, which is increased, V1 is placed, uh, measures the deviation opposite uh, the dipole moves opposite to the v1 and therefore it creates a greater negative uh, potential greater negative um, sort of a uh, ecg tracing right okay uh, left axis deviation is also seen in case of the left atrial abnormality and uh, that's not hard to imagine because uh, uh, the because of the dilation of the left left atria that would be the mean axis of the heart would rather shift towards the left side and this would again cause a left axis deviation one important point that i would like to emphasize here is that left atrium is posterior right atrium is slightly anterior and if we have the limb uh, if we have the chest lid v1 it would measure the positive reflection uh, positive reflection towards itself and uh, left atrium depolarization is negative deflection and that uh, sorry um, just draw some wrong over here let me rub this thing away um, hmm. Now, it would create a tracing of uh, like this, biphasic tracing in case of the V1. Now, P pulmonali. P pulmonali can be defined as the appearance uh, of the P wave abnormality. It's right axis deviation. It's uh, increase in the amplitude is due to uh, as a, when, when all these ECG tracings result due to the primary disorder of the respiratory system, it's called P pulmonali. Um, this is usually in case of the COBD patient or in say in emphysema patient when the dome of the diaphragm is reduced and uh, this causes a sort of a flat diaphragm and the heart sort of appears vertical in this and uh, now what happens if the heart is more vertical the uh, mean axis of the heart has actually shifted towards the right because heart is slightly horizontal normally and now if it's shifted towards uh, towards right therefore the mean axis has shifted towards the right and this causes a right axis deviation okay now what happens when we have abnormality in both the atria it's simple uh, what will happen is the addition of both the abnormalities of uh, both so the abnormality uh, that that the wave would be prolonged uh, as in case of the as a result of the uh, LA that is the left atrial abnormality notched again as a result of left atrial abnormality increased amplitude um, as a result of the right atrial abnormality now uh, we have something called p tricuspidale now what is p tricuspidale it's simply the initial component when the uh, when the initial component of the p wave is taller uh, in comparison to the later component um, it's called as the uh, p tricuspidale now this abnormality is usually associated with the tricuspid valve and hence the name p tricuspidale the p wave can be uh, tall peaked and wide in case of the v1 all due to the right atrial abnormality and peak again due to right atrial abnormality wide because of the left atrial abnormality dome and dart p wave is seen in case of the atrial extrasystole what happens in the atrial extrasystole when the atria fires normally uh, SNO fires normally there uh, there should be a p wave like this however in case of when there is extrasystole uh, slightly there is a notched uh, sorry there is a notch like appearance however the peak is uh, relatively more sharper in comparison to the notchy appearance and this uh, there is a dome 
and there is a dart and therefore we call this a dome dart appearance of the p wave and this is usually seen in the v1 uh, chest lead okay with this um, we can conclude our uh, uh, this lecture on the normal and abnormal p waves